Today we look at a very practical matter, namely how solid packaging systems for regular ammunition, detonators, rocket and artillery ammunition are a major problem in a longer conflict. As such, this video includes a complete unboxing video featuring a solid soup can opener and an axe. Note that these systems are of course still in usage by Ukrainian and Russian forces in the current war. A German combat engineer that was fighting with the Ukrainian legion noted the following in a tweet about the packaging. Anyone who has ever seen a BM-21 Grad multiple rocket launcher being reloaded understands that the Soviets would have lost to NATO on logistics alone. So I looked up the reloading time for a BM-21 online. Two sources note that it takes about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, the US M270, which is quite a different system, for instance, has far larger and fewer rockets, takes four minutes for the M270 and three minutes for the M270A1. As such, I asked a combat engineer for clarification. He notes that these are theoretical values for the BM-21 and they don't mean much. And that the main problem is that for the BM-21 each rocket comes packaged in a wooden box with handles that are for transport by hand. But one box for one rocket and the BM-21 has 40 tubes. Here you can see how these boxes look like in a photo from Ukraine Weapons Tracker shared on Twitter. Another problem is that these wooden boxes don't come with hardened parts or grommets for easier handling by forklifts or other equipment. So the whole process is based on manual reloading. For 40 tubes, that means 40 boxes need to be moved, 40 boxes that need to be unpacked, 40 rockets that need to be put one by one into the tubes. Note that some countries build modifications to allow for easier reload of the BM-21, but as far as I know, Russia is not among them. This is in contrast to Western systems like Mars or HIMARS. Here the transport container is the firing container as well. Those systems have their own loading crane to lift the containers in and out. This means only one person is needed for the reloading process. This is similar to some German Nebelwerfer variants of the second world war by the way, which fired the rockets directly out of the delivery boxes. But back to the BM-21 grad. The combat engineers doubtful that the BM-21 can be reloaded in 10 minutes. Since even if all ammunition is unpacked, once a tube is being loaded, the other tubes can't be really accessed. 10 minutes for 40 tubes, then each tube must be loaded in 15 seconds. There's a video of Russians loading a BM-21, which is heavily cut and there's one rocket that is loaded in about that time in the video. But the rockets are basically just lifted up and shoved into the tubes since they are stockpiled directly behind the BM-21. Also, this was one of the first rockets. I suspect after a few rockets, exhaustion might set in. The combat engineer thinks that 30 to 40 minutes seems to be a more realistic time. He notes that the main difference here is that the West uses container systems, whereas in Russia and Ukraine, solid artillery ammo and rockets and similar systems are transported in wooden boxes. These are not only impractical, but also are easily get destroyed over time. He adds that there is also a shortage of these boxes. Whereas Western systems are optimized for reuse, the Soviet systems were mostly made for one-time use or at least not extended usage. Now some might argue that the BM-21 Grad is very old and does not compare with Western systems, or that the Grad should be compared with the German Lars due to being on the light side. This is a fair point, yet first off, the BM-21 Grad was designed in the 1960s but is still produced today, unlike other systems that are old but not in production anymore. Additionally, the BM-30 Smerge, which went into service in 1989, so far more modern than most systems used nowadays in Ukraine, also has each rocket reloaded individually. Note that the Chinese created a variant that allows the exchange of the entire launch box. Second, the issue is Soviet and more modern Russian systems still use similar approaches. There are Russian systems with a crane, yet that mostly is used to help loading a single rocket, not a complete set. Another example is the TCMT dedicated reloading vehicle for the TOS-1 multiple rocket launcher. It has two ammunition racks and a crane, but the crane is used to load a single rocket, not a complete set. Yet let us move on to the unpackaging video. You will see how detonators, small arms ammunition, but also 30mm cartridges are packaged. 
namely in these soup cans or soviet doom boxes. Let us first look at the equipment the combat engineer is gonna use here. A hammer and axe, these are not part of the kit. Then a metal piece that looks like a soup can opener. One of these was provided with four boxes, although our combat engineer noted that generally after two boxes it becomes dull and can't be used anymore. So basically it is like an Austrian bureaucrat, with the main difference that the Soviet soup can opener at least works for some time. Finally here is the box. The text on the box reads as follows. Detonator devices with mechanical fuse. The white label notes, item index 57 SV332, CTPM 50 20 units, CTPM 150 10 units. Note that 50 and 150 refers to the time in delays in seconds. Batch 1, year of manufacture 1981, Packer number 8, quality control 1. Thank you to Peter from Tank Archives for the translation. Now a short word from our sponsor, namely my Patreon and subscribers or supporters. Additionally, if you like books, you might want to take a look at various books from our little publishing house, the Military History Group. The links to these and other books are in the description. So with that out of the way, let the unboxing commence. Now if you want to have a full sword immersion, I suggest watching this video on an empty stomach. Anyway, on the right we have the sword box of doom. The combat engineer now applies the can opener on the right flank of the box and slowly but steadily cuts through the enemy lines. Now for some lever action to open the gap for the main force. Now for the next side. Well, I think you get the general idea. So let us fast forward a bit. Now we are about 3.5 minutes into the video and we can finally apply the axe and hammer. Sadly, no sickle was available during the recording of the video. Be aware that the combat engineer let me know that this was probably a new record time for him in opening this thing. And now I first look inside. Oh wait, is this wood? Yes, it is. But it's not any kind of wood. It is solid wood. When the combat engineer first shared the pics on Twitter, a user asked, in the Soviet Union you need an axe to unpack the firewood? To which the combat engineer answered, yeah. Of course, this raises the question, why wood? Well, these boxes were used universally, as such the wood was used as a filling and dampening material if there was more space in the box than needed. Let's continue. Now the combat engineer gently removes the wood from the box with his axe and hands. Below the box there is a sheet of paper which is an inventory list and some basic description of the items. So you can see the items. Inside the box there were two cardboard boxes, one with 10 CPTM 150 detonation cords and another one with 20 CPTM 50. Then two pieces of wood for demonstrating that socialism is economically superior and six pieces of paper that each have strikers in them that work with both the CPTM 150 and 50. Note, not all of them are visible. As you saw, the packaging is not particularly efficient. Now some might note, well, this is a bit unfair since detonators are rarely an item that needs to be quickly accessed and generally combat engineers use them and they should have the proper equipment. That is correct. The issue is the Soviets also use this kind of packaging for many other things as well. For instance, small arms ammunition. Put your notes. This is standard for all kinds of small arms ammunition. The best known example is the large cans for rifle ammunition. Hand grenade detonators come one to one in the format of soup cans. Another user specifically mentions small arms ammo. I have also struggled with a can of 7.62 times 39. Yes, that has final boss potential. Furthermore, this packaging is also used for ammo for outer cans like the 30 millimeter that is for instance used in MI24 Hind. As you can see these boxes are not particularly large so the unpacking time for firing time is probably not the best. To summarize, the Soviet systems for packaging shown in this video were focused on one time use or at least not a long term sustainable reuse. This creates problems once a conflict goes on for a longer time since the packaging system gets damaged and become unusable or outright destroyed. The quality also does not really invite reuse. Of course, in some scenarios this might be beneficial. For instance, if the troop will discard the packaging regardless or if it gets lost. But generally for a sustained conflict this seems not to be a good idea. Keep in mind that the cherry can gas can from World War II is considered as an excellent logistical equipment. 
Yet according to the official US Army history, soldiers discarded them in large numbers and this became a major issue. Thanks to Andrew for pointing this out. Another aspect here is that the Soviet forces had a lot of tubes, so mortars, rocket artillery and regular artillery, which means they would spend a lot of ammunition. As such, these systems seem even far less sustainable. These packaging systems not only require a lot of time to unpack, but reloading becomes also cumbersome since, like for the rocket launches, no mechanical equipment is built in in contrast to western systems. As such, over time this wears down the troops, creates more garbage and reduces operational readiness. Thank you to Butya for answering various of my questions and doing the whole unpacking on camera. Thank you to Andrew for reviewing the script. Thank you for watching and see you next time.